Now, I'm no stranger to fucking. In fact, you could say it's one of my favorite pastimes, just running around and fucking. Let's put it like this, everybody has a vice, right? Some people smoke, some people work too hard. My vice is having sex with a near astronomical amount of attractive women. If you were to know how much sex I have, it would make your head spin. So you can imagine my bewilderment when I discovered that about one third of young men aren't fucking. That's not good. What could be causing this? Could it be society's standards? Could it be that these dudes, they're just playing video games or watching anime all the time? From the looks of it, you'd think they like their iPods more than fucking. Either way, I've been getting millions of messages every day and it's always like, please, Please, teach me how to fuck, I need help. Well, your calls for help will not go unanswered. The fucking commander of Clunge is here to save you. So what's the number one factor when it comes to success in dating? The way you look. I don't know when we started denying this. Actually, I care more about like a genuine personality than the looks. Yeah, but you're a fucking liar though. You're lying. Stop lying. And also, what the fuck does that even mean? That's not to say that personality doesn't matter. Let's just say it's 50-50. It might be 50-50. What needs to be considered is that looks are the first 50. They're chronologically first. And that's a big deal because of something called the halo effect. Basically, right when you see someone, you automatically apply either positive or negative traits to them depending on how they look, and you see them in that light. If you're ugly and you talk a lot, you're annoying. If you're attractive and you talk a lot, you're outgoing. This has been proven. In one study, 60 participants were given three pictures each. One of an ugly person, one of a decent looking person, and one of an attractive person. And then they were given 27 traits to apply to each of these people. All the attractive pictures got the good traits, and all the unattractive pictures got the bad traits. In another experiment, participants were given an essay, and this essay was attached to either an attractive or unattractive author, but it was all the same essay. And when asked to critique this essay, the attractive person's essay got all the good reviews, even though it was the same. A study on kids in the seventh grade found that aggression increased popularity for attractive students and decreased popularity for unattractive students. When you see someone, your brain has a chemical response based on the way their face and body is built, and you have a bias towards them, either positive or negative bias. This is the main reason why looks have priority over personality, because your looks determine how your personality is perceived. And it doesn't go the other way around. I could be outgoing, shy, honest, or manipulative, my bone structure doesn't change. And it's not even a matter of whether or not you're shallow. Everybody does this shit. Humans are animals. So you might even think that you're going for personality, but really you're going for after how someone looks. Because your whole perception of personality is based off how they look because you're a fake ass bitch. Now being a clinical psychologist myself, I decided to run a little bit of an experiment myself. And I'm underage, so I downloaded this app called Yubo. And my understanding of this app is that it's just a bunch of teenagers running around having premarital sex. It's honestly the work of the devil. But it's okay, because every day the rapture draws nearer, and soon enough all these hoes will be purged to eternal hellfire. So, you know, you get what you get for joshing around. Pretty much what this experiment is, is I'm gonna look up pictures of just a super attractive Chad, and upload them as the pictures and see what I can get away with saying and still um, uh, here's the profile that I've alchemized right here pretty nice um, I'm a hetero twink and then there's a Bible verse now I might seem like a little bit of a hypocrite because I did previously say that I fuck and now I'm ridiculing all these kids for having premarital sex um, but the thing is you might be surprised to know I'm married I'm married to the game. I also want to point out that this ho ass app also attempted to censor my profile because my fun bags were out. I'm just kind of going. I'm, I probably swiped on like a few dudes by now, but it's all good. Um, I'll, I'll fuck dudes too. It's good practice, you know? Well, I guess it's time to start chatting to these underage babes while I still can. Soldier Boy Rippin wanna fuck. The four words that will get you laid in under four seconds. Let's go. My taters, your lips. What do you say? I'm an absolute silverback in the sack. Are you trying to get clobbered? This girl likes all these artists, so... Uh... Anyways, wanna fuck? You want some little twink boy milk? Is that right? Alright, so for some reason the audio there is pretty bad, but... I went on to say some more stupid shit. I asked... Uh, for some pictures of this girl's dad, and I got him. And then I asked this one girl if she would shit on my chest, and she said she would. So that's great. 
Here are some pictures of some responses from the other ones, and eventually, I just lost my shit and couldn't come up with anything else remotely funny. So I just sent head with a question mark to as many broads as I could. See, what you have to understand is dating is a numbers game. And if you just keep on shooting a shot, eventually it will land. And I just want to address something really quick. Um, I just found out that the girl who consented to shit on my chest is 14. And I'm 17. I, I don't feel good about this situation. I feel strange. So I just want to apologize. But this doesn't mean I won't be capitalizing off the situation. If you have one shot, one opportunity to get everything you wanted, would you grasp it or let it slip? There's tons of data that suggests that short ethnic men have it absolutely terrible in online dating in the West. And it's important to mention that Tinder and online dating, you know, people say it's separate from real life. But that's a goofy point. People are on their phones a lot. These things don't happen completely separate from each other. I think it's about 40% of modern relationships start on dating apps now. And look, I don't have a PhD in psychology or whatever, but I do have a PhD in fucking. And uh, you know what I'm saying is true. Can we just admit something? It's tough out here. It's tough out here for guys. Because the average viewpoint seems to be that if you can't find someone, it's all your fault. I don't think that's the case. I mean, there's clearly something wrong here. Dudes are forking over tons of money to OnlyFans, watching streamers that are like these virtual girls. It's fucking strange. Women look for the best that they can get. And this was completely good and fine until Bill Gates and his homies whipped up Microsoft and the internet, and now everything's connected. Men like 61.9% of women on Tinder, while women only liked 4.5% of men. When men rate women from attractiveness on a scale from 1 to 10, it comes out as a perfect bell curve. But when women rate men, it's like 5% are attractive and the rest are butt-ass ugly. Let me just say this, you can try your hardest to find someone and still fail. Nobody wants to admit that. This shit's not a Disney movie, okay? The just world fallacy is the belief that life is fair when it actually isn't. Do you think dating? which is all about discriminating between people and picking and choosing, do you think dating would be exempt from that? Of all things. We're talking about one third of all young men here. And everybody just says, they're not confident enough. They don't have game. They don't take showers. They need to get a haircut. They need to drink more fucking water. While that may be true for a lot of them, maybe some of them just got unlucky. You ever consider that, fucko? You could be born without a leg. You could be born with a chemical imbalance that will make you fucking sad your whole life. You could be born unfuckable. It happens. Shit happens. Have you ever seen those videos in China or Russia or somewhere where people are walking and then a pothole just opens up in the middle of the street and they fall and fucking die? They're literally just walking. They didn't do shit. And then the ground falls from under them and they go into the abyss. Here's the problem with incels though. If you're a short ethnic man, data wise, you have it really rough and you have every right to be frustrated. But a lot of incels aren't even like that. They're just like weird, normal looking white dudes and they're just fucking strange. Like Elliot Roger, that guy wasn't even unattractive, he was just a psychopath. You know, but there are plenty of other examples of just kind, nice guys that got completely fucked over by their genetics. You know that main character in the movie that's kind of nerdy and he gets picked on but he still gets the girl? That doesn't happen in real life. The girl is attracted to the bully because dominance over other men is very attractive. And then the, the one kid goes and shoots up a public mall. Or more likely, if he's not violent, he just goes home, plays a lot of video games, watches a lot of anime. He can escape to a world where girls have big purple eyes and giant tits. And he just slowly becomes a husk of a man. It is true that confidence is attractive. And we've all seen a guy who's not very good looking, but he's confident and he gets a girl. Why do you think that one guy who's ugly but gets girls stands out in your brain so much? Because he's an exception to the rule that for the most part, hot people fuck. Maybe he just has a confident temperament. Maybe he's naturally charismatic. It's not like these things are always easy to control and change about yourself if you're just, if that doesn't come easy to you. It just so happens that autistic men get completely raw dogged in the dating scene. Much worse than autistic women. Autistic women do all right. Confidence comes from positive affirmation. You can't just summon that shit up. 
You can't just be like, oh, I'm confident now. Everybody can tell you're faking it. If you don't get any affirmation and you don't have any reason to be confident, your brain, your body, and everybody around you knows you're at the bottom of that pyramid. And your feelings about yourself, chemicals in your brain, your body posture, everything will respond accordingly. Every summer before school started, I would feel pretty confident about myself. I was around all my friends all the time. I would be feeling good. But every time by the time I got home from that first week of school, I would have been completely shot down. I walked in the first day ready to conquer, and every time I just got fucked. When I walked into high school, I was under five feet tall. You can't just be confident. I've just now reached the average male height and I'm still growing, but it's already a night and day difference. I can clearly tell how much easier it is to be confident now. Telling someone to just be confident isn't far from just being like, if you're homeless, just buy a house. Okay, there's more factors at play. Because if some people have a lot of wealth, some people have to have no wealth. And if you have a lot, you receive more. That's how nature works. This is real life. And I regret this, but me and some of my homies, we created a poon monopoly. A pussy tycoon. And uh, we monopolized all the poon in like a 45 mile radius because we have that power. The total fucking gaslighting that happens to dudes who can't get any is crazy. You know, they'll say, be confident, all that shit. And then they'll say, it doesn't even matter. Pussy's not everything, bro. It's like, yeah, it doesn't really bring you happiness. And once you get it, it's not a big deal. That's like one of the biggest problems of life is that happiness is elusive. It doesn't change the fact that if you're not successful with the opposite gender, it's a one-way ticket to a genuine chemical imbalance that will make you suicidal. So that's it. That's the cold hard truth. And let me say this. If you're a guy out there and you feel like you're trying, you work out, you feel like you're a pretty funny, cool guy, and you're still not successful in dating, it's a wacky concept, but maybe it's not your fault.